Mr. Chairman, sir. Ma, time ko keep yeah. mind. Ah. So I rise to intervene in the ongoing discussions on the, the crucial pieces of the legislation that will have a long-term impact on the safety and dignity of the Shiro tribes and the Dalits, who are being persecuted for generations. With this amendment, the government hopes to add more teeth to the existing act, further diluted and debilitated by the recent Supreme Court. By the recent Supreme Court judgment, there was nationwide angers over the judgment and all India rally was to be held today of this month by Dalit activist organization in protest of the Supreme Court judgment. Even within the ranks of the ruling combined, there were murmurs over the judgment of the Apex Court, sensing that the situation will snowball into a crisis of sort the government has pitched for this amendment bill to defuse the crisis. Beyond the political compulsion of the government to hurriedly push through this pieces of legislation, there is of course a cause that will in some measure neutralize the adverse impact of the Supreme Court verdict and let more teeth to the existing law. With the die-hard traditions followed by the patriarchal and feudal dominations in rural India, such atrocities are likely to continue until a social transformation is brought about beyond the deterrent impact of laws making perfection of crimes a coinable offense. Happily, we are witnessing a search of the Dalit communities to secure an equitable and dignified life. With legal readdress, with the increased awareness of the availability of tools to seek legal redressal, of their grievances and judicial dispensation, responsive to the aspiration and rights to the oppressed, I hope this bill will mark a step forward. With this observation and reservation, I commend this bill for unanimous adoption of this August House. Thank, Thank you, sir.